What? You're messing up my lawn, and that's my leaf blower. So? What do you mean, so? You can't just go into my garage and take things, you ignorant man. Why not? Ain't no fucking law against it. Yes, there is, you fat buffoon. How'd you tell the cops you've lent it to me? Your word against mine. Who they gonna believe? Oh, look! Just give me back the leaf blower, and I'll forget the whole thing! Oh yeah, so then you can just blow all them leaves back into my yard. Where'd that leave me, huh? I don't think so. I won't. I promise. Well, you seem like a trustworthy fellow and all. And since you was kind enough to lend it to me, i tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call you a stupid fucking full of shit a-hole liar, and throw your dumb weed machine as hard as I can onto the road. You stupid fucking full of shit, a-hole liar! You're gonna pay for that, Percy Spencer! Percy Spencer don't pay for nothing, asshole, so fuck off! Hey, Ma, come here. Ma! Jesus, I was trying to sleep, you idiot. What the hell do you want? Come here and look at this. It's a house, Poise, so what? Just like always, you're missing the fucking point. Look at that, right there, that glad thingy. It's a window, Poise. I know what it is, woman. But if there's a window there, that means there must be a room behind it. I ain't following you, Poise. Come here. See, there's the living room, right? And the kitchen's down there, right? Yeah, where the beers is, right? Yeah, the place you'd cook if and if you ever got off your lazy fat ass and made a meal around here. Right. And then there's the upstairs where we sleep. Put the windows over there. So that must mean there's another room on the other side of this wall. Jesus Christ, Poise, I think you's right. I wonder how you'd get there. How long them boxes been there? Nine years. Wow, I bet the door's behind them. Come on, let's move them. Yeah, like I'm lifting stuff. Find yourself another sucker. Who knows what's behind there, Poise? It's like a treasure hunt. Maybe the room is filled with diamonds, or the mirrors you get at the fair with the rock band names on them. Man, that'd be sweet. We's probably only got to move a few of them so as we can crawl through. Can't we just get the boy to do it, or, or hire someone or something? Use your fucking head, Poise. The boy don't know the room is there. It could be like a... A secret place where we could get away from the little freak. We could have our own secret beer fridge. And smoke's coming out our assholes! Hey, imagine what it'd be like if you could poo smoke instead of shit. That'd be something, eh? <laughs> a guy like that could write his own ticket. Cash money, baby. Probably even get on Mike Bullard. That guy'll buck anyone. Shut the fuck up and give me a hand! Shit, you was right, Poise. Of course I was. When you's gonna learn? Keep going, fuck, I wanna see. Holy shit! A 
All right, class. Who would like to go first? <laughs> uh, okay. You in the orange shirt. Uh-oh, this ain't gonna work out. You need to make an incision first using the scalpel. That's not a scalpel. That's a piece of chalk. Stethoscope. My lunch. Yes. That's not how you make a proper incision. You're not actually a student of medicine, are you? Kevin told the professor that he wasn't a student, but that he was auditing the course, because he hoped to be a doctor himself one day. Well, I appreciate your eagerness, but I'm afraid you're just going to have to wait until you have finished high school and an appropriate undergraduate degree. Kevin told the man that it wasn't real likely he was ever going to finish high school, because he pretty much stopped going about halfway through grade 9. Then perhaps you should be thinking about a profession more suited to your academic experience. Kevin told the man he wasn't real interested in thinking about anything or having any kind of profession, since only assholes had jobs, and that he was only there because he kind of liked looking at dead bodies. Oh my god! You're one of those freaking sociopaths who read about in Psych 101! Come on! Let's get him! Jesus Christ, Kevin! Just once, I'd like to enjoy a whole hoagie without you getting into a knife fight. Well, the way I see things, that there window's about your only option. So have at it, broken head. Fucking classy, that's what that is. You ain't gotta tell me about class. Man alive! Did our house really used to look like this? Yeah, don't you remember when we first moved in? No, I was drinking a lot back then. Oh, that's right, I forgot you used to have a problem. Yes, sir, it was a real sweet fucking place back then. I blame the boy. If we got rid of him, this whole fucking house could look like this. Well, if the whole place used to look like this, then I only got one question. How in the name of fuck did we ever afford it? Oh, well, well, that's an interesting story. Let me just fire up the old corn cob pipe and I'll tell you all about it. Ah, oh, what the fuck? Mmm, that's some smooth tobacco. Anyways, like I was saying, it all happened many years ago when we were living in that trailer under the bridge. What the fuck you doing, idiot? I slipped and fell on that fucking step you said you was gonna fix. I'm still in the design phase. When we got married, Boise, you promised me the good life, goddammit. And you was 50 pounds lighter. Besides, I don't remember giving no specific dates on that, so quit busting my job. Three fucking years we've been living like this. Three fucking years, Boise, tripping on the same step. Day in, day out. <laughs> Fuck, you'd think you'd be smart enough now to step over the fucking thing. What's that? I didn't say nothing. Listen up, you useless asshole. 
Until you get us a real house to live in, I'm cutting you off. Yeah, like you ever buy the fucking booth around here. I ain't talking about booze, Boise. No house, no poon tang. And before you start thinking it don't mean nothing, go take a long, hard look in a mirror. I may not be the best piece of tail around, but I'm pretty sure I'm the only one who'll bang you regular. <laughs> That's all fine and dandy, Boise, but it still don't explain how the fuck we got this house. Let me go grab some beer first. Fine, fuck. Just hurry up and bring me the whole case. And some smokes. I should have left you at the fucking trailer. What is that? Is that, uh, that one of them, uh, the, is that a Wolverine or something? Kevin told his dad it was a badger, and that it was his new pet. Then Kevin said if he wanted to make something of it, he'd be happy to go on street rules. You and your pet. Hey, remember that time you had to shoot your dog because it was rabid? Man, you bawled like a little baby. Kevin told the old man that he'd never shot a rabid dog, and he was probably thinking of the movie Old Yeller. Oh yeah. Hey, but I bet if you did have to shoot your favorite dog, you'd cry like a little girl, hey? Eh? Hey, cry baby. You're gonna cry now, baby. Ooh, I'm a cry baby. Nice shot, cry baby. Anyway, me and White Ass is going out for a while. So if you're hungry, I left some dine and dash instructions on the fridge. So use on your own. See ya, boy. Masterful, Percy. Absolutely masterful. Quit transferring the rage you feel for daddy to me, and get this rope off my neck! What's with the fucking gopher? Kevin told Alan that the gopher was his new pet, and that he was going to train it to be an assassin, or do tricks like fetch and roll over. That's fantastic, Kevin! Now how about you get your daddy's instructions, and you and me go stick it to some high-class restaurant? Daddy boy, but we're gonna have to find you a proper suit, so they let you in. Kathy restaurants only let you in if you're wearing a jacket and tie. Kevin asked Alan what the general policy was at classy restaurants concerning live animals taped to your head. Yeah, we're just gonna have to play that one by ear. So keep going, how'd we get this place anyway? Well, you kept harping on me to find out the better place to, day in and day out, until finally I had it up to my ass with your bitchin'. Right up to here, Pudgy. Up yours, I'm medium boned. For a buffalo, maybe. Let me in. Let me in, woman, I'm getting wet. You find me a better house or else you fuck off for good, Boise B. Spencer. Up yours. I'm going drinking. Toss my wallet out. Once again, fuck off. Fine. I don't need no money anyway. Maybe you're forgetting my foolproof dine and dash instruction. Finally, fuck. Dine says you're open. Yes, it does. Can I get you a drink to start with? Give me four bottles of your best imported beer. They'll use a midget, eh? Technically, my dwarfism derives from a method known in medical circles as achondroplasia. Yeah, well, Ichondra don't give a fuck. I was just making nice because I'm wet and hungry. So how about you put a lid on it and bring me them beers? Of course. Arthur. Miserable night out there, eh? Fuck off. (laughs) 
Would there be anything else? Uh, just the moment. I don't think so, pal. You owe me two hundred and fifty dollars. I, I, I left my wallet in the car. I will be back in a moment. Bullshit. I mean, I, I have to put my money in the meter. I will be back in a moment. Look, you thieving fat prick. You ain't getting out of here until I get my money. And if you don't have it, then I'm calling the cops. Percy didn't know what to do. He didn't have anywhere near that kind of money. And he didn't figure he ever would. Quit stalling, asshole. Give me the money. Then it occurred to Percy that he was a whole lot bigger than the midget. So he picked him up and threw him across the bar. Holy shit! Nice throw! You didn't see nothing, pal. I seen a lot of guys throw midgets, but I ain't never seen someone throw one that far. You should, uh, you should enter one of them contests. Contests are for losers. I'm just saying, a man with your talents for throwing a small-sized human being that far could make himself some nice coin. Let me get this straight. There's a place where I can throw midgets across the room, and instead of getting arrested, I can get them cash? They got a contest down at the Retarded Elk every Friday night. Man, that sounds sweet. You thinking of, uh, entering? Fuck off! If abusing midgets gets you a house, then I'd have real estate coming out my ass. Cut to the fucking chase already! Keep in your pants, fatty. I've got to take a leak first. <laughs> Kevin had just finished the best meal of hot dogs and poutine he'd ever had. So he figured it was high time he got around to reading his father's dine and dash instructions so he could hightail it out of there without having to pay. Kevin got confused. He really wanted to get going, but he didn't see any midgets anywhere. Then he figured it would be a whole lot easier just to create a diversion than slip away when no one was looking. So he set the tablecloth at the next table on fire and pointed the finger at someone else. Sniffing the restaurant for the bill was a whole lot easier than Kevin had imagined and he got to thinking about all the other cool things he could get by creating diversions. <laughs> the more Kevin thought about it, the more he lost interest, since it seemed like a whole lot of walking and heavy lifting. So he figured he'd just steal some prescription cough syrup from a nearby doctor's office and go to the park and see if he could get more hammered than he'd ever been. Kevin felt pretty good about himself for thinking that, because normally he wasn't the kind of kid who set goals. So the next Friday, I headed down to the retarded elk, figuring on throwing me the midget. Where them fucking midgets at? It's 10 in the morning. We just opened. Midget toss isn't until 9 tonight. Oh, well then give me a jug of draft. I'll wait. So as I sat in that same stool all day drinking draft, and the drunker I got, the more I wanted to get my hands on a midget. So by the time the contest rolled around, I was as loaded as I've ever been, and I was just itching to throw a fucking dwarf. And to the winner goes, a check for $500 and a chance to move to the regional finals. Fucking, fucking stupid little fucking hate you. I, I do all of you. Who would like to go first? Ah! Ah! Yeah, so, uh, why don't we just call it a night, and here you go. 
For the first time in my life, I felt like I'd finally figured out why God put me on this earth. My internal rage and lifelong hatred of midgets combined to make me unbeatable. Finally, the big day of the finals arrived and it was just down to two of us. Me and some backwoods freak hillbilly. None of the local midgets wanted to have anything to do with it. But luckily, the contest organizer was able to buy one from a circus bankruptcy sale someplace. The stage was set. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first annual nationwide Midget Dawson Championships. Having won the toss, Delroy Limpert is elected to throw first. <laughs> went wild, and who could blame them? That's what they'd come there to be. But then it was my turn, and they fell silent in anticipation. I don't mind telling you, I was scared. I'd thrown a lot of midgets in my time, but I'd never come close to throwing one as far as Delroy had. But there was a quarter million dollars at stake, and I aimed to give it my best shot. I could feel the crowd inching forwards in their seats, getting nervous. I took one last deep breath and grabbed the midget. And that's when I noticed the sign. I got to thinking, you always busted my ass for a real house. And since there was no way I was going to beat Delroy anyway, I kicked the midget in a knob and took the house. Fuck off and give me my house. Jesus, Boise, you done all that so you could get a house for me? Yeah, I guess so. Come here, baby, you fat, handsome drunk. For you, and because I like hitting midget. Who don't, Poisey? Who don't? Something's wrong with that kid. Better not cross the path.